With very little effort on our part, we can create our Next.js applications using some of the framework's built-in components instead of the standard HTML versions. This will help us improve our overall load times within our site while also providing our users with other benefits in terms of user experience. In this lesson, we will discuss the image and script components that are built into Next.js. To start, I'm going to create a new Next.js application in my current directory. All the code for everything will be able to be found on my GitHub, by the way. Link will be in the description for each lesson. Let's get started by creating a Next app. We are going to use TypeScript, we are going to use linting, we are going to use Tailwind, we won't use the source directory, we will use the app router, and we won't use import aliases. I'll be back once this is done loading. Perfect. We now have our new Next.js application. Off camera, I just deleted all the boilerplate that goes into our page.tsx file as well as I did the same within our globals.css file, except for our Tailwind configuration. I also added this image of a cute puppy for us to work with, with the image tag. So in here, I'm first gonna render that image with just a regular IMG. Then source equals JPEG. As well, I'm going to render it with the next image component. One thing we have to do with this image component is we have to add a width and a height. And the original width and height of this image is 640 by 681. So I'm really having a bit of trouble with this linting here. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna now run this in development mode and let's see what we get. Host 3000. Okay, perfect. So now we're going to see our two images as expected. However, let's inspect them and see what's going on. So we inspect this. We're going to see that our file size is 98 kilobytes with the regular image component. However, when we come down here and we look at this one, you're going to see it's 46 kilobytes, as well as it gives us a source set of different sizes of the image, but it'll make it a lot better when we have a responsive layout. If you want to optimize your images for speed as much as humanly possible, you can still use an image compressor like TinyPNG. This will do essentially the same thing as a built-in image component within Next, However, if you use it, you will still shrink your images by a little bit. I already compressed our puppy image and I just called it puppy compressed. I'm going to use that now within another image component. And now let's go back over to our next app and see what's going on. Okay, perfect. So we have our three images. You'll now see our, our image with our classic IMG tag is still 98 kilobytes. With our built-in next image component, it is 46. And this will have a good amount of diminishing returns if you're using tiny PNG, some sort of image compressor with the built-in image component. However, you will still see it'll be a bit smaller. Let's see. Yeah, it'll be so 44 kilobytes. It only saved us two kilobytes, but if you want to optimize for load times as much as humanly possible, this is the way to do it. So I just moved over to our layout.tsx file and we're gonna go over how to use the built-in script component. 
So the script component will make it so that if you load a script in that needs to render on every page, if you, you load it in your root layout, it will mean that it doesn't have to load every single time between a page transition. Here, I already have it copied and I'm just using a hot jar initialization script. So this is what it would look like. This is what it looks like if you copy it right from Hotjar. However, we want to use the built-in script component, so just use a capital S. I already have it imported up here at the top. And we can also declare something called a strategy. And I'm going to do lazy on load. As well as we also have to put these everything in here within curly brackets so that we can load this properly and it's just lazy on load yeah there we go so now when we refresh our page if we go down here in our body and we look at all of our scripts you will see at the bottom I mean now oops this is because I didn't refresh that properly see perfect lazy on load and now we can see our hot jar script running properly so this would mean if we had multiple routes within our app directory, it wouldn't have to load the whole script in every single time. The script component also gives you a lot of versatility because if you see I use lazy on load, that means that it'll wait to load the script before, or it'll wait until everything else is loaded on the page before it loads the script. But you could also use something like, we'll do after, after interactive and that will make it so that if you refresh it you'll see it come in here after interactive perfect that it'll wait until there's a bit of hydration done to where the page is interactive and then it'll load that script so you can basically plug and play with it a little bit more in terms of when you want to load in your scripts what can be very beneficial obviously it's very case specific though that's all I have for you guys for today in the next one, we're going to talk about the Bundle Analyzer plugin, which will allow us to see all the little JavaScript bundles that are sent to the client. And then we're also going to talk about dynamic imports and how we can then make it so that these bundles aren't shipped with each page and that they can be a lot smaller, making our load time a lot faster. So yeah, once again, that's all for today, and I'll see you guys in the next one.